today we're looking at basic shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and how to make them all work together. The exposure triangle. But the exposure triangle can be kind of daunting, and we're getting into some of the basics of the compromises of each one. Now, each one has its attributes, its factors. As the ISO goes up higher, the grain, the noise becomes more obvious, the quality deteriorates, the colors aren't quite as crisp and saturated. As the shutter speed becomes too slow, there adds a certain element of blur to the scene. If the aperture is more open or less open, it will change how much is in focus or how much is out of focus. We call that depth of field. They all have their own attributes and they all work together seamlessly. Now becoming an expert can be difficult. Using the manual exposure on your camera is a big deal. If you have a manual exposure on your camera, I highly recommend using your manual exposure to make sure you're getting the best quality out of your scene. Manual exposures are a big deal to get the best exposure possible with all the control. It can be challenging, it can be daunting, it can seem like it's just easier to put it into a program mode. P does not stand for professional, it stands more for pathetic. Let's try not to use that if we can help it. So let's teach you some of the shutter speed ISO compromises. Here is a shot I photographed in the shade so the light wasn't quite as extreme. And so I was shooting a 60th of second shutter speed at an aperture f2.8 100 ISO looks crisp and sharp and focus on our eyes it looks crisp and sharp I was not using an image stabilizer in the lens or in the camera to show what happens when you're not using some of the modern technology now if you have an image stabilizer in your lens or in your camera I recommend using that it will help with some of these problems I'm going to show but here I shot the same picture at it one eighth of a second I lowered the ISO use an eighth of a second. Some people say use the lowest ISO, ISO possible and there's advantages to that. Nowadays most of the cameras you get into three, four digits even and they still look pretty good in the ISO. But I lower the ISO and if you look closely it looks fairly decent. But if you really zoom in and look closely it looks much softer than you would imagine. Now if you looked in the back of your LCD screen you're not going to be able to tell the difference of if it's sharp enough or not in the camera. You can really tell us when you zoom in and put it on your monitor. But that was the picture with a 60th of a second. And that was this picture shot at an eighth of a second. It makes a significant difference because the shutter speed is having what we call camera blur. Now there's camera blur and there's subject blur. We're going to talk things about subject blur in just a little bit. But the shutter speed makes a big difference when hand holding your scene. Here we're using a aperture of 2.8. This allows us to have very little in focus. The flag is sharp, the background is blurry. As I change to f8, I was now able to let more in focus in my background, which is a creative technique, a creative choice. Now, if I went to too slow of a shutter speed and was going to keep my eyes so low, which here I definitely didn't, I could have stopped on to f22 and then I had a blurry picture. But because, as we just talked about the compromise, I raised my ISO a little bit and used Aperture 22 to allow more things to be in focus. Personally, I like the narrow depth of field in this situation, but there's times you might want more things in focus. The Aperture definitely gives you more things in focus with how you change and open and shut your lens. Now, there are times where shutter speeds are important. Most sports action photography shot at a thousandth of a second or maybe even a little bit faster. A thousandth of a second should freeze most of your human action. Everything that you want to freeze, maybe a, a, of a human running, uh, jumping, swimming, should be frozen at a thousandth of a second or even a little bit faster. But look, you do a good job of freezing the action of the goalie or the, the athlete or the sport or whatever is going on in the scene. Now, at times you might want to use these shutter speed slower, intentionally going to something like a 30th of a second, in this example, 15th of a second, 8th of a second. Uh, we call this a panning technique. Uh, you're kind of moving the camera with the subject at the same time, and you're tracking them along the way. And I would keep the picture all the way down, click the picture, and continue to track them with the action. And that allowed me to have this blurring factor, where the people, because their bodies are not moving too much as I'm matching the rate in their camera, the only major difference to the back of the frame is their limbs and of course the background is completely moved and the ball has an interesting spinning pattern as along the way. So it creates a different technique with this painting technique. So you can explore faster shutter speeds and slower shutter speed. There's no right or wrong rule. As you become more comfortable, you'll become better at mastering the main master exposure and creating even the best pictures possible without the help of some of the automatic exposure modes like programmed, aperture, or shutter compromise. So, don't be intimidated by the exposure triangle. It is your friend. It's part of the technique, whether you're shooting film or whether you're shooting digital. It is a big part of photography. Master the scenes, 
they'll transfer to any type of photography you want to use. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.